Welcome to our slash entitled parents where this crazy mum and dad stalk their own daughter while she's on a tinder date By the way, she's 21 years old. My parents stalked me. I am 21. I am female I understand that there can be dangers to dating But the way my parents go about it is ridiculous I met this girl on tinder a while ago and we've talked pretty much every day We had our first date a week ago at the mall. It went great But I didn't tell my parents because I know how crazy they are fast forward to tuesday We're having another date now this one. I do tell my parents about it was at the movies But I had the feeling that I shouldn't tell them that so instead I said Oh, we're going to the mall to hang out the movie went great and I went over to my date's place afterwards Then I get texts from my parents asking why i'm not at the mall My dad had driven an hour to that mall look for me and look for my car Holy heck you are insane Then after my dad tracks me with my phone and asks me why i'm near the beach That's where my date lives like dude. What listen? I understand wanting to value my safety, but that was an extreme violation of my boundaries I had a gut feeling telling them where I was actually would be a mistake and I was correct And they still don't see how screwed up it is to stalk their adult daughter All right, a few things op first of all tell them to fuck off And that's actually not a joke. Like what are they doing? You're 21. I get it. Look being a protective parent, especially over a daughter It makes sense. Okay, but not that don't do that. That's way too far Second of all turn whatever your little stalking silly app is off They don't need to know where you are at all points If I had to have that on my whole time my parents like yeah, I need to know where you are Uh, No, that wouldn't happen. I'd probably just turn it off to be honest. Uh, Yeah, turn that off. That's weird Oh my god, i've just seen a comment as well from op actually upset because I really like this girl But my parents are probably gonna scare her away sad face sad face Man, I just feel bad for you. Honestly, just don't tell the girl that you even have parents. Just say you're an orphan Honestly, just f*** them them off now moving on to our second post of today's episode Mum wants me to give her my cats. I volunteer fostering cats My cats tend to go to a cat cafe, so I don't typically do meet and greets But when I do i'll have people stop by so they can see the cats in its territory and get a good sense for the cat's personality A mum and her four-year-old daughter stopped by to meet one of my kittens She applied online and went through the foster organization. So I didn't know her but my husband was home So I felt pretty safe. I have four cats of my own and for this meet and greet I shut them in my guest room just to make things easier. They're not huge fans of kids anyway Everything was going great. They met and liked the kitten and when we were walking back to the entrance We passed the guest room then the four-year-old heard my cats meowing So she sprinted to the door and opened it before I realized what was happening The cats scattered except for my gray one now He is an adorable boy with a half milk mustache and little mittens The four-year-old fell in love immediately and ran to him and started yelling that she wanted this one Because it was the same as a stuffed animal she has the mum asked me how much it was for him And I politely said he wasn't up for adoption. She kept arguing with me trying to get that cat but like i said he is my cat the four-year-old then started shrieking because she couldn't have the cat and she picked him up i asked her to put him down but she's four she started squeezing him and he was trying to get away but at that point he hadn't used his nails yet he's such a good boy the mum made no moves to intervene and i tried to take the cat without touching the girl but i didn't want to play tug of war and hurt the cat so as gently as i could i tried to put her arms apart Then the mum came at me screaming for touching her kid The cat got away and the whole way to their car They kept screaming about how I was a terrible person and I shouldn't have showed them a cat They can't have the four-year-old was bawling uncontrollably. It was horrible I felt horrible the mum threatened to call the cops and my foster org My husband was asleep because he works third shift. So he only caught the tail end of it He obviously doesn't think that I was the butthole in this story because giving up our cat was never an option Also, I know cat tax is a thing But i'm not gonna share pictures of him to avoid any ability to trace back to me and my foster group I don't want any negative publicity for them because there are people who think I handled the situation poorly I don't want any of my actions to reflect on my foster organization. All right, sorry, but can someone explain how OP has handled this situation poorly? Like, I don't get that at all. What do you want her to do in that situation? Just say, yeah, 
have my cat. Like, in what other way can you say, no, that's my cat, you can't adopt it? How is that handling the situation poorly? That is just stupid. And again, like I tend to say in my videos, I don't blame the kid in this situation, especially given they're four years old, right? They see an adorable cat, they're going to want it, obviously. Therefore, I do blame the mum, though, for even entertaining that and not just saying right away, no, darling, that's not your cat. And that one is not up for adoption. Sorry, let's move on. Speaking of moving on, now for story three. The little idiot that ruined my Halloween. This isn't as much entitled parents as it is entitled kids and completely incompetent parents. Honestly, r slash incompetent parents would be a good subreddit. That is actually a good shout. Not people that are entitled, just parents that have no idea what's going on and are just not capable of taking care of their kids. I would back it. So in my house, Halloween is like advanced Christmas. We aren't just into it, we are it. My dad starts setting up well over a month in advance and we have some stuff to my chagrin up all year. No, apparently chagrin means disgust. So Opie doesn't like it, but his family have Halloween stuff up all year. Now, if that's not Halloween obsessed, I don't know what is. The whole property all the way around has hundreds of decorations. So this year, my dad drove over an hour to get the last Jack Skellington animatronic available in our entire state. It cost around $300, but he had to have it to match our Sally by the entrance. So, backstory out of the way, this family are a little bit obsessed. So, while my dad's out there amongst the animatics, giving tours and talking with our literal professional clown friend who's helping out, I'm on candy duty. So, a large group of kids come to the door and immediately knock Jack over because they're all wanting to crowd and not wait in line. But it wasn't damaged. Yet. They then almost knocked over Sally as I put Jack back up. Eventually, he's standing up and I can give them their candy but I don't even get a chance to say, take two or take a handful. This kid just takes a handful, then another. I tell him, okay, that's enough. And he takes another handful saying, wow, this is so much. I once again tell him, no, that's enough now. As I take the bowl and move it to the other side of the door, closer to the other boys. The same guy though reaches for a fourth and I move his hand away. Finally, all the kids have candy, so everything's fine right i can finally give the two little princesses who showed up their treats too now well i guess i was wrong as i'm reaching to the bowl to give to the girls i see that same kid grab jack and knock him forward on purpose it feels like slow motion as he tips forward and pop off with his head jack is laying on the ground beheaded and i'm just standing there shocked as i see this kid walk away the poor girl was trying to ask if she can take two, but I was so shocked it took me a while to reply and it was awkward. I still feel bad because it wasn't the girl's fault. I wish I could have told them a cheerful happy Halloween. After I give the girls their candy, I straighten up Jack and assess the damage. And yep, he's dead. I mean, dead, dead, not his usual undead self. Wires, a completely clean break. The plastic, no. So no hope of twisting the wires back or fitting the head back on. After a minute, I go to the group of parents and ask if they are the parents of that group. They say yes, and I tell them how one kid purposely knocked over Jack while he's currently punching our inflatables. They all immediately knew which kid this was, and they said something around, yeah, he can be a little rough, in a very boys will be boys dismissive way. Later, I found, according to my dad, that the kid was still kicking and punching the inflatables after I left as the dad stood there and the mum said stop once but didn't actually do anything i eventually found my dad and told him what happened to say he looked like someone kicked his puppy as he held jack's head would be an understatement i told him he can talk to the parents since they are still here maybe they might listen to an adult man more than a petite woman but he couldn't find whose parent was whose as none of the parents stepped up to take responsibility for their kid so he didn't say anything he's still been kind of down and i've been off it's his favorite day and i'm so upset that parents will just stand there and not even care and think they shouldn't even be sympathetic that their kid destroyed someone's expensive property because they're a spoiled brat this halloween has been a bad year uh yeah to those parents just a quick little message 
You're an absolute embarrassment. You're a disgrace. You, you are, are nothing. nothing. You're a fool. You are a fool. And you're a waste of time. Waste of if time. you are someone watching this video, just know that I think that of you. So just deal with that. All right. I mean, seriously, they're like, come on. Every normal parent or person would say, I'm so sorry that my kid has done that. You know, we'll discipline him later or whatever. Tell him that's wrong. And then offer to pay the money back. Not just offer, just pay the money back. Not that money can replace things like this that, you know, there's only one of in the whole town or whatever that he drove an hour to get. But still, at least offer the money. At least. Come on. That's the least you can do. At least. And also, like, the kid is only rough, right? Because, again, like, I know I always say, don't blame the kids. And this kid, yeah, probably is a little, like, swine. But he's only rough because his parents have told him not to be rough. So he thinks he can get away with it. Like, I don't think he's doing it maliciously. Like, he's not probably a very malicious person, just naturally. I think it's just his parents clearly not standing up, not taking responsibility for their rough kid, letting him do whatever he wants. And eventually, he's going to end up punching someone in the face. So, uh, yeah, take that as you want to. You clowns. I mean, to be fair, I say punch in the face. Probably just going to prison is what I actually mean. Everyone gets in a fight once in a while. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of r slash Entitled Parents. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more Entitled Parents straight away, well, yesterday I uploaded r slash Entitled Parents, the movie Halloween special. Boom. Check it out. It's like, how long is it? It's long, guys. It's nearly 100 minutes. Check it out. It's exceptional. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video.